What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp, uh, I guess we'll call it a speed modeling tutorial. And so I haven't figured out exactly how this is going to look, but in the future I want to do a little bit more of just kind of like modeling out little projects, um, just because they're really great practice for modeling and also kind of understanding the way things are going to come together inside of SketchUp. So um, I'll be showing you kind of step by step how I would take these projects and model them out so that they're easy to change, things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in these models, I'm going to go fairly quickly in here just because I don't want these videos to be super long. So I'll try to talk you through some of what I'm doing as I do it. But at the same time, I'm not going to talk you through like the super high or the super detailed organizational things that I'm doing. If you are interested in learning more about that stuff, um, you can check that out in either one of my courses. So I do get really in depth on that stuff. But for these videos, I want to make them kind of... Um, I want to make them kind of quick so that we can just get to a final result. And so I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to organize everything so I can turn it on and off. So I'm going to create layers for my ceilings, floors, walls, things like that. So then I'm going to turn x-ray mode off and I'm going to set up a view where my ceiling is off so that I can see everything on the inside. So I'm just going to add a scene. I'm going to turn off my ceilings um, tag inside of that scene. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and reverse all of these faces because we're going to be focused on what's on the inside. Now, sometimes... Um, now, depending on what you're doing, you may want to model these walls with thickness. For me right now, I'm not really super worried about that, um, just because this is just kind of a quick space model rather than something I'm going to send to layout. But if you are going to send something to layout, sometimes it's better to uh, model those things out with thickness. But for right now, I'm not really too concerned about it. I'm going to go ahead and hide these walls just so they're not in my way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some textures in here, and I'm going to start also adding this the equipment that's going to go in the space and so I'm going to go ahead and apply some accent colors to a couple of these walls and then I'm also going to add a mirror in here and so I'm assuming this mirror is going to be six inches above ground and then another six inches off of the wall over here six inches off of the wall here and six inches off the wall here and notice how I'm using the tape measure tool in order to create guides inside of my model and so I'm just going to take this whole thing I'm going to make it a group and we're just going to call this mirror and then within our mirror I'm going to right click on this edge and I'm going to divide it and I'm just going to split this using the move tool in copy mode by copying different edges. And so I'm going to give this just a little bit of thickness. So we're going to call it maybe an eighth of an inch. And then you can just go through and double click all of these. Notice how when I do that, what that's allowing me to do is that's allowing me to get around that Z fighting that's in there when two faces occupy the same space. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a material in here. We'll go ahead for right now and just go into our glass and mirrors and just apply this mirror 01 material. And so we're going to leave that alone for right now. We might come back in and adjust this a little bit because it looks a little bit weird at the way that it's sitting in here, but I think it's going to work okay for right now. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a wood base. And so the way I'm going to create a wood base is I'm just going to draw a little profile in here and we'll make it really simple. And then we're just going to extrude this. So I'm going to say this is going to go up five inches high. We'll just say this is what our base profile is going to look like. Well, what I want to do is I want to extrude it along this path, but that's a little bit of a problem because uh, because my line is inside of this group. So I'm going to double click in here and just do a shift click like this, and I'm going to select this path, right? So I'm selecting the path, and then once I've um, selected the path, I'm going to activate the follow me tool. I'm actually going to right click and I'm going to click close group and notice how the follow me tool remains active. Well, I can extrude this 
along that face by clicking. So you can use the follow me tool to extrude things outside of groups. So I'm just gonna triple click on this. I'm gonna reverse the faces and I'm gonna make it a group. And we'll just call this group wood base. And so that's gonna be my white piece of base on the wall right here. And we could put that on a tag to turn it on and off. Um, a lot of the time you wanna put that trim on something like that. But now we're in pretty good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a window. And there's a few different ways you could do this. I'm just gonna go into the 3D warehouse and go find a window. So we're just gonna do sliding window. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and look inside of the products just because you can get like a more realistic window by looking in the actual product section of the warehouse. And for this one right here, all I really need is just kind of a simple slider. So we'll just go ahead and go with this optimum window right here. And I'm just gonna click on this face and notice how this particular window isn't set up to cut faces. So we'll just have to cut the opening manually, which isn't a giant deal right here. There we go. See, and we're good to go. And I wanna go ahead and inside of this window, I wanna color this frame a darker color. So maybe like a dark, there we go. I want this to be kind of a darker frame right here. So now we've got our space pretty much roughed out. We could go in and add lights or something like that, but I'm gonna start adding things like gym equipment and other things like that. And a lot of those I'm just gonna pull in from the 3D warehouse, right? So if I go to the 3D warehouse, I can just do a search for like, let's say a rower. So I can search inside of the models to find a rower. I'm gonna go ahead and sort these by popularity and we'll go ahead and Let's just go with this rowing machine right here. So I'm just gonna click on it, bring it in, drop it in my model. And we can just rotate this using the move tool like this. And make sure when you're moving this that you're moving it along the axis. Or another trick is you can just click on this face somewhere in order to move something around um, as well. Just make sure this is inferencing so that it's still on the face. And then you can use that in order to move things around without having to worry about being like, picking like fine points or anything like that. So I'm gonna add this rower. I'm also going to add an exercise bike. And we'll just go with this bike right here. So I'm just gonna bring this in, place it right here. And so one thing you might wanna think about doing when you're bringing equipment in like this is you might wanna think about grouping all of these together. So um, that way everything stays a little bit more organized. So for these, for example, I might put them in a group and I might label that group equipment. And then I might put that equipment on a tag called equipment. So if I do that, now I can toggle all that stuff on and off. And so the other thing I wanna do is I wanna add maybe a row or maybe um, like a squat rack or something like that. And for that, I thought we could go ahead and model that out just cause those are simple shapes and I thought that might be kind of fun. And so for a squat rack, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by drawing a rectangle. So I'm just gonna tap the R key, then I'm gonna tap the right arrow key to lock this to an up position. And I'm just gonna say that this piece of tube is maybe, two inch by two inch. So I'm just gonna draw a two inch by two inch rectangle right here. Then we're just gonna extrude that out. So I'm gonna extrude it out. We'll call it five feet right here. And so for that piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that a component and I'm just gonna call this like rack foot or something like that. Well then what we can do is we can just use the move tool in copy mode to copy it over however wide this rack is gonna be. So let's say this is gonna be four feet. I don't know what the actual dimensions of a squat rack are, but we're gonna go ahead and call this one good for right now. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that foot, I'm gonna use the rotate tool. So I'm gonna to tap Q and click on this corner and I'm gonna tap the control key to go to copy mode. When I go to copy mode, that's gonna create a copy of this object. So I'm just gonna move this back so that it's aligned with this object right here. I'm also gonna draw a line across here so that I have a midpoint to inference to. Then we'll find our midpoint, move this over, 
right here. And that actually worked out pretty nicely because that foot is about the same size or the right size to work across the back here. So now let's create our vertical pieces. And so our vertical pieces, if you think about them, what they're going to be is they're going to be tubes just like these, right? So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. Again, that's just two by two. And you'd want to pick up whatever the actual dimensions of these are. But we'll go ahead and call this two by two for right now. And I'm just going to extrude this up maybe to a height of like, we'll call it eight feet for right now. And so I'm just going to triple click on this and I'm going to make it a component and we'll call this rack vertical. And so remember on a rack, what you have is you have a bunch of holes on the front because your equipment kind of like locks into that. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to draw one of those holes. And let's say we think that the holes start, we'll say 18 inches above the ground. So I'm just going to draw a guide 18 inches above the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line across this face so I have a central point to inference to. And then we're just going to draw a circle that's maybe three quarters of an inch, whatever the size of the hole is going to be. And so for simplicity's sake, because we're not really going to get too close to this object, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut an opening just by using a circle. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And then notice how that kind of automatically cuts that opening for me. Well, then we're just going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy this. I'm just going to copy it up two inches. I'm going to type in times and we'll say it's going to be 25 or times 30 in here. And so notice how what that did is that came in here and that added the geometry, but it didn't cut the openings. Well, one cool trick that you can use is you can double click in here to select all of the, you can select this face and all of the connected edges. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the backside. So I'm just gonna do a double click with my shift held down. Notice how that picks up all my edges. Well, then, and I'll turn on x-ray mode just to make this a little easier. I'm just going to hold the shift key and I'm going to do a right to left crossing select. What that's going to do is that's going to deselect everything that I had selected and it's going to select everything that I didn't. And I'm going to do a shift click to make sure that I didn't pick up these faces or these edges. But notice how now the only thing I have selected is the faces in here. And you may have to do some cleanup on your selection, but generally that's going to be the case. Well, now I'm going to make sure I don't have anything else selected in here. I'm just going to hit the delete key. When I hit the delete key, what that did is that deleted out all of this extra geometry in here. So now I have the front piece of my squat rack. Well, a couple more things we might want to do is first of all, it's going to have a little metal piece right here. And so I'm just going to split this face just by drawing a little edge. And then I'm going to push pull it out maybe like two inches. And so what I've done is I've modeled out this front piece of my rack. Well now I can just make copies of that. And notice how since these are components Right? If I make changes to one of them, those changes will be re reflected across all of these objects. So now they're smart components, and if I do end up making a change, it's not going to be a huge deal for me in order to make that adjustment. So I'm just going to go through it, and I'm going to also model out the support pieces that run across here. I'm probably going to speed this up just because um, it's really just going to be rectangles that I'm extruding out. You could come in here and model out bolts and stuff if you really wanted to. I'm not really super interested in doing that right now. So I'm going to model those out, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at our overall space. All right, so then the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to come in here and um, on this face, and I want to make sure I'm outside of this group so this geometry doesn't merge. Um, what I want to do here is I'm going to model out the little pieces that hold the weights on here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model out the little 
the little pieces that go on here that hold the weights on. So I'm just going to do that by drawing a plate. And we're assuming that the plate is going to, I'm going to find the midpoint between these objects here. And I'm assuming this plate is going to run all the way along this piece. So I'm going to push pull this out and we're assuming this is going to be we'll call it 3 16 I'm good with that for right now. And so I'm just going to draw the little tongue that comes off of here. So let's push pull this up. For this piece, I'm just going to move this geometry out. Something like this. And that gets us pretty close. So the other thing that we might want to model, depending on how much detail we want to go into, is there's going to be a little piece that comes out here that kind of wraps around the back. It comes across here. That's probably about as much detail as we need to get into for this piece. So I'm just going to triple click on this. We'll just make this weight holder. And then I can just copy this across. I can flip it using the scale tool. So I'm just going to scale it to negative one. And I'm just going to move it back over. So then I'm going to take this whole thing. And I'm going to put these in a group. So I'm just going to make this a group. We're going to call it squat rack. Then we'll just move it into our equipment group right here. So then all we have to do is just add a little bit more equipment, maybe some decorations on the wall, and we're going to call this good. So overall, this just gives you kind of a general idea of how I might rough out a space like this one fairly quickly. So had I downloaded this piece of equipment from the 3D warehouse, this would have gone even faster. You can see how setting this up, though, everything is separated by groups, so it's really easy to make changes and adjustments on the fly as you go. But I'm going to go through and add a little bit more detail with pictures in the 3D warehouse, maybe a couple more pieces of equipment, and then uh, we're going to call it good. If you guys have any questions about anything that I've done in here, leave them in a comment down below. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. I kind of like videos like this just because they let me talk a little bit more about workflow as I'm going, but I'd be interested to see if you guys found this helpful, if you'd like to see more videos like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. So if you're interested in learning more about the right way to put things together so that you can create things like this and then uh, create like plans and layout or other things like that, you can check out my course, The SketchUp Essentials for Architecture, where I talk you through exactly how to set everything up, how to group everything, other things like that. Um, you can check that out at the link in the notes down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.